Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters and friends I hope everyone is fine with the blessing of almighty Allah so without any delay let's start today's video here's the thing if you want to change Imam al-Ghazali rahimahullah he says something beautiful he says إِذَا الْمَرْءُ كَانَتْ لَهُ فِكْرَةً فَفِي كُلِّ شَيْءٍ لَهُ عِبْرَةً when a person is really deeply involved in some sort of thought when something is, is heavy on his mind heavy on his heart then everything around him will be a guide towards that thing. You love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything around you has meaning all of a sudden. Every single thing. You really have a sense of urgency, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show you the way to change. Because you know what, at the end of the day, it's different for everybody. All of us have our different demons. And every single problem has its specific solution. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who guides you to that. As Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah said, Rahimallahu imra'an shagalatu ayubuhu an ayub nas May Allah have mercy on a person who is too busy with his own faults to be worried about anybody else's faults. A sense yeah. of urgency. So I just typed up five things. These are five tips if you want to take notes. The first one, eliminate the poisons in your life that aren't allowing you to change. And essentially what that teaches us is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he taught us about this heart, this qalb. Imam al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he says what? Your qalb is a space. You fill it up with you fill it up with anything else. You're not going. Be, you're not going to have any space for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in there. The problem is not the qiyam. The problem is that you're doing the things that will stop your qiyam from being accepted. The problem is not your du'a. The problem is what you do after du'a and before du'a. That's the problem that you're having. Eliminate the stains from your life, and then you would find that you naturally would start to come close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala because once your heart becomes clean and mm. honest, your heart starts naturally inclining towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Your fitrah is to incline towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So eliminate the things that corrupt your fitra. Number two, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. You know, some people, subhanAllah, they wait for really, really, really bad things to happen. They wait to see the consequences of their sins before they change those things. An ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. What happens is that shaitan claws you, he digs you into this hole, or you dig yourself into this hole. It's a lot harder, harder to climb out of that hole than to have taken care of it in the first place. Put aside the flaws you already have, don't go any further. Imam Al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he says that every single action that you commit, every single sin that you commit goes through the following stages. Number one, it's a fatwa, yeah. passing thoughts. Number two, after it's a passing thought, it becomes a fikra, settled thought. You start thinking about it. Hey, what about that? After I've entertained the thought enough, shaitan has told me about how great the benefits of this action are going to be. And essentially, we commit sin because we think that it's going to serve some sort of benefit to us. We think it's going to give us some sort of pleasure. And it usually does for a temporary time. Then it becomes a niyyah. I have the intention to commit that sin. After I have the niyyah, the intention to commit that sin, once I've made the intention to commit something, nothing's going to stop me. Then it becomes azimah. I'm determined to commit that sin. No matter what stops me. Right? At first, I was very hesitant. Now I'm full force. And that's why once you have azim, it becomes amal. It surfaced, it became action. Once it becomes action, it becomes ada, becomes a bad habit. Once you have a systemized sin in your life, trust me, that will kill your dua, that will kill your salah, that will kill your, your opportunity to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why from the dua that we, that we make, Allahumma naqina min al-dhunubi wal khataya allati takbisu dua, wa naqina min al-dhunubi wal khataya allati tanzilu al-bala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify us from the sins and from the mistakes that cause our du'as to be cut off and that cause the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to descend upon us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa tells us that at one point you become defined by your sin. Just like at one point you become defined by your good deed. In Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that a person would tell the truth so much, he would be so truthful, hatta no. yuktab Allah siddiqah. Till he's written with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a siddiq. Not that he told the truth one time. This is a truthful person. This is someone who is truthful in his faith. And then a person would lie so much, not that he told the lie here or there, until he's written with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a kathab. Your name with Allah is a liar. SubhanAllah. You become defined by your traits. You become defined by your deeds. Number three. Anyone ever heard of the acronym KISS? Keep it simple sunnah. Keep it simple sunnah. We can all agree upon that. Rasulullah tells us that when a person goes to his grave, but when you go to your grave, what are the things that you're praying for? What are the things that you miss? What do you really want? He would come back and wish he could just offer two rakas. Just two more rakas. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might forgive him with those two rakas. Find something small in your life that you're capable of doing and stick with it. Eventually that will accumulate. 
eventually that might be the cause of you entering into Jannah. That's why the Prophet said, what is Aisha radiallahu anha narrated? That the most beloved actions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, adwamuha, inqalla. You know, the most consistent of them, even if they're very, very, very small. How much time do you waste of your life that you could be planting trees and palaces in Jannah? That's change. Keep it simple. Sunnah. Have a word, not one of these words that's made up by some shaykh somewhere that you're going to be doing. No. Go to the sunnah of the Messenger وسلم, and that's sufficient. Find the things that he used to do on a daily basis sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and incorporate that in your life. Number four. Think progress. Why do I say this is so important? How shaitan gets you. He makes you think backwards. Is it halal to fast if you don't pray? Why don't you start praying and add that? So that your fast can become validated. SubhanAllah, think progress. Don't think backwards. Shaitan always pulls you this way. Shaitan always pulls you this way. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always calls you forward. Make progress. There's one person who always does it for me, Imam Siraj Wahaj, Hafidullah. One lecture I found, he did this khutbah in the 80s called Islam means progress. It's my cassette. I popped it in my car. Alhamdulillah, I don't drive a new car. Islam means progress. One of the greatest lectures I've ever heard in my life. Number five. Um, he converted to Islam in the Amarat actually in the UAE. He said, on your way to becoming a good Muslim, don't become a crappy human being. Becoming a more religious person should not make you a jerk. It should not make your character worse. It should not make you more condescending towards people. It should make you, mo make you more humble. It should make you more loving. It should make you more compassionate. It should make you more caring. So brothers and sisters, I hope you have watched today's video and I hope you liked the video of Dr. Umar Suleiman always speak according to Quran and Hadith and I hope you have watched his video till end. So in today's video, we have watched a video of Dr. Umar Suleiman in which Dr. Umar Suleiman told us about five things to bring in our life and if we bring those five things into our life how easy it would be to spend our next life and he also told us that how shaitan put negative thoughts into our minds so we can be away from the teachings of islam when iblis refused to process to adam salam, allah expel him from heaven and the curse of allah is upon him until the day of resurrection allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him then get out from here for verily you are outcast and verily my curse is on you till the day of resurrection then he asked allah to grant him respite until the resurrection and he granted him that iblis said to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow me respite till the day they are raised up in the resurrection when iblis felt safe from destruction he rebelled and transgressed because you have sent me astray surely i will sit in wait against them he means human being on your straight part this is how shaitan now spillah challenge allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will misguide his people from his part. So guys, what do you think? What Dr. Umar Suleiman says about our life? If we implement those five things into our life, will our life become happier and easy to spend or not? Please let us know by giving your comments below. And if you are satisfied with the video of Dr. Umar Suleiman, then it's a request to you guys. Please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so whenever a new video will be published, you will get its notification first. See you guys in next video. Till then, Allah Hafiz.